Welcome back. We are continuing our conversation with the good folks who will be presenting at the Park City Library Speaker Series coming up on the 27th. Next up, a return to a conversation that I enjoyed very much the last time that we were together. And as such, I look forward once again to welcoming to the show author, coach, and speaker at the upcoming series. It is permission to be courageous and this is Terry Sidford. Good morning, how are Hi, you? Terry. Good great to, see, to you. see you lady. You look great as always. Thank you. How Thanks you for having me. Great. Absolutely, absolutely. Talk a little bit about what's happening here. Permission to be courageous. I like that phrase because I think sometimes folks that that may be a little hesitant in their personality or their makeup may need that. It's okay to have some guts and to to go for it. Absolutely. And you know, sometimes it's as simple as just giving ourselves permission to do it or see ourselves that way. And it's been a journey for myself. I never saw myself as courageous at all. And I wrote my book on women and courage, which is 100 Hearts. And what I found is that women in particular did not see themselves as courageous. And I know that men and women have completely different right. views on what that what should that be means, yeah. for themselves. But for me, I learned that I was courageous in my life. I never saw myself that way. So it's been, it's been life changing for me. It's really cool. Yeah. Talk about the permission part because I've been thinking a lot lately in, in my own life and sort of my own experience of how we, we reach out to others, to coaches, to family members, to friends, to supporters. But in the end, we must rely on ourselves and if we do, the great freedom is that you can give yourself permission. It's not about permission from someone else, someone who is judging you, who is saying you are good enough or you are, you're good enough. We're all good enough, but we need to give ourselves the ability to say, I give me permission. That is just a huge statement because we're the only ones that can give ourselves permission. Yeah. And we're the only ones that can stand up for ourselves and be who we know we're going want to be. No one else knows what we should be. <laughs> Truly. But are we living our life based on who we want to be, or are we living our life based on what others think we should be, or someone else's life? Like, oh, this is how it should look, and this right. is who I should be. But I think it's one of the most courageous acts, which you just mentioned that you've done some self-reflecting yourself, to to stand up and be who you really are meant to be and to really show up 100% because it's not it's not really supported and and the reason is and I tell a lot of my clients this is that people have a hard time with other people showing up 100% because they're not doing it in their own life right and so you're going to get pushback so, so don't true. be surprised so if you're prepared for that yeah. and just you know show up be your best self and that's a courageous act, I think. Truly. Talk a little bit more, if you would, about this difference. And I, I think in, in many ways we're, uh, we're thinking more about these kinds of issues in the year 2018. But talk about that differing uh, vision or definition of courage at, for men and for women as, right, it's 2018. A lot has changed in the last 20, let alone 40 or 50 years. Absolutely. Right now is, is a huge time for men and women. And women, for the very first time, have a platform to show up and be seen and heard for who they truly are. Because historically, it wasn't accepted for them, right. really, to show up and, 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 and show their true brilliance. And all they really wanted at their core was to be seen and heard and to love and be loved. So, so well that's, said. that's how I see women. And then men, I think underneath all that, it's kind of the same. You want to be seen and heard for who you are. And I think at the core, we all want to be able to love and be loved. And men just have historically an, another set of, of circumstances that they, they think that they can't show their feelings or, yes. or be weak and that yes. they have to be c courageous all the time. But maybe being vulnerable is a courageous act. Absolutely. And it occurs to me also that I, th I think in a lot of cases with men that it's the appearance of the idea 
of courage and, and, and more of a layer than truly an act, a, a, a certainty to, to go in a particular direction, but rather I, I, I need to, people to perceive me in a certain way. And, and of course, that is, is simply a defense. That's not courage, that's a defense against vulnerability. Exactly, exactly. Can you imagine if in, in this, our talk that we're giving next Tuesday, it's paradigm pivots. Could you imagine if we all made that, that shift, that paradigm shift? It would be That huge. vulnerability is actually strength and courage. And the more that we show up and be vulnerable, it allows others to do the same. And isn't that what we all need, is to witness the vulnerability Absolutely. and the strength in each other? Absolutely. Yeah. Very well said. Yeah. Tell me about what it's like to do this kind of an event where you're up front, you've got a live audience. We've talked in the past about your coaching, we've talked about your writing and, and those forms of communication. What is your feel? What is your preparation like? Of course, we all know TED Talk. Yeah. That's kind of a paradigm now. Yes. And I'm sure in some ways we're, we're, there are some parallels between what's happening here and that well-known uh, format. But talk about what it's like for you uh, to be a presenter. Do you love the public speaking? Do you like that seeing that audience of people that are right there and making eye contact with you? Yes, I absolutely love it. Never thought I would. And when I did my TEDx talk, I was kind of shocked because they have these lights shining in your face. And I was relying on connecting eye to eye right. with people. Sure. And I was not able to do that. So that was kind of a shock for me. But I love the thrill and the excitement of being able to tell my story and mm -hmm. then see the reaction afterwards. People were crying, people coming up after, giving me a hug, and there's, there's just nothing like that. Yeah. And to be able to tell your truth, again, it's being vulnerable and telling your truth. There's, yeah. there's nothing more freeing than that. So that kind of got the fire burning inside of me to keep going. And I thought, okay, what's next? What's next is a keynote, which would be a 45 minute speech. So I took my TEDx talk and I'm just expanding it. And I thought that 18 minutes seemed like 30 minutes. TED right. talks are 18 minutes. So I'm like, okay, now how am I gonna get that to a 45 minute speech? Sure. And it takes practice. And for me, it's practicing every single day. Do you? And another, another, you know, another, a number of times over, you finally get, it sinks in and it becomes a part of you. But that's why we're doing this because there's, it's different in the live audience versus in your, in your room, you know, Absolutely. and you're talking to the plan or whatever it is. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we're doing this. That's it's fantastic. Just, it, yeah. Well, uh, I, I, I look hopefully forward to be able to see your talk. I'm not sure what, I, what your timing is within the program, but uh, it'll be, be pretty tight for me to get out of here and make it over, but I'm gonna hope to be oh, able I to hope, do that. I hope you can. Because I have to say, Terry, I, I, I find that your charisma is such that I, I just want to encourage you to do lots more of the public speaking. I think that uh, I think your energy is, is such that people really need it, and I'm sure that you've gotten that uh, reaction from people in, in doing your work, but just as someone who observes and says, you got, you got the goods and I'm really excited to hear where you go from here. Of course, this will be a fantastic event next Tuesday. Uh, tell folks uh, social media contacts, where to find you, uh, whether it be online, social media, for books, coaching, all of the above. All the above, it is createyourlifecoaching.net. So you can find my uh, email, phone number, and send me a line and, and please show up and support us next Tuesday, five o'clock to 7.30, Santee Auditorium, because we are putting ourselves out there and being very vulnerable and we would love to, to have your support and I know everyone's gonna walk away with something new to think about and a new way to look at their own lives and, and it will change you. So I really appreciate you having me. I think you're, you, know, you, uh, you help bring out the best in others as well and so I appreciate you giving me the platform to uh, tell my story, my journey of how I've gotten here. Well, there's, there's so much passion around us and I, I just feel like I have an, a, a very fortunate uh, place in the, in the context of the universe to encourage others who have the ability to go out and, and be of help like an event like this. So Terry, Thank it's you. always great to see you. Best wishes, createyourlifecoaching.net. Yes. 
Dot net. It. Dot net. <laughs> yeah. I've got it memorized. <laughs> okay. So great to see you. You too. Happy Thank holidays, you. and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. You too. Terry Sidford, createyourlifecoaching.net. Permission to be courageous. Make sure to include her speech next Tuesday at the Jim Santee Auditorium. More speakers to come. Quick break. We'll be right back after this. Please do stay tuned to Park City Television.